I used to read a lot of philosophies, poems, ideas, concepts, constructs. A lot of what people call the world's great wisdom or accumulated ideas. And they seemed like, on first glance, pretty, pretty interesting. You know, they seem like a good idea, something that, wow, maybe that, maybe that works. Maybe that's true. Maybe it spits. But there's always something in the back of my mind that whenever I thought about it, really, I could always find the exception to the rule. I could always find something wrong with the idea. I could always see how it worked in this setting, but not in this setting. My mind always was able to kind of take in the big picture and see how the small concept couldn't fit the overall general venue of people, of humanity, of life as we live it. I could see that philosophy just didn't work right. It sounded good, but it didn't seem to have God in it. And after I got saved, you know, I could, I knew the answer was God wasn't in it. You know, it was trying to imitate God in a way that would give somehow the power of what God did without God being in it. But unfortunately, when you take something to try to make something out of something without the actual person in it, it isn't the same. It's like when you make an imitation. Have you ever noticed that? There's the real thing. And then there's the imitation of it. It's kind of like karaoke, you know? You could have the original recording artist sing a song and you kind of go, wow, that's cool. I like that. Then you get someone to come along and they, maybe they can sing. Maybe they can't. Well, they decide to sing that song that the original recording artist made and they do their best. But you know, it just doesn't sound the same, does it? It's not quite the same. You know, sometimes some of the remakes that I hear of the original songs, they don't sound the same either. Some of them just really aren't the same at all. They're kind of not the same first time you heard it. It's not like the first time you fell in love with it. It's not like your first love of that song. And it's not like the first love of that original artist. I find in modern Christianity, people trying to repackage God. They're trying to change him into some kind of different version of God Almighty. I see people take scriptures and they make these posters and they leave out parts. And I go, that ain't it. That's not, that's not right. They'll say, God won't give you anything bigger than you can handle. And that's not true. God will. Because, you see, they left out the rest of it. You know, they rephrase it, cut it up, dice it up, change it, and try to make it fit their own idea or philosophy of God. It's not the original. See what I mean? And it's not about the original translation or interpretation or something. You know, No, it's just... When you're really dicing and slicing and chopping and trying to imitate things and make it sound godly, when it's not God himself, it's not pointing to Jesus, it's not revealing something about God, then it just doesn't have the same oomph. It doesn't have the same spirit. It doesn't have the same inspiration. And I can always tell them. People throw things at me every day, because I'm on the internet, but they toss out these seemingly woos and ahs of philosophy and they mix in a little bit of scripture with it and they say, this is what we should be doing. And I go, well, you know, Jesus said, oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't involve Jesus. Just, you know, go with me on this. This is what we want to do over here. Yeah, but you know, Jesus said, no, we, you know, we, we, we don't want to deal with that Jesus stuff. You know, we just want to deal with this stuff. 
Okay, but you know, Jesus told me, well, ah, here you go again, talking about that Jesus. What's the matter? You got Jesus on your mind? Sort of. I got Jesus in my mind. Matter of fact, I got Jesus in my heart. And I got Jesus in my soul. And it's kind of like he's in me because he's with me. So maybe I do talk a lot about Jesus. Maybe I do seem to have Jesus always on my mind. Because I kind of like the original, you know? I don't need the new reformatted, repackaged God that we take out Jesus and other things too in order to make it fit. For what? It doesn't work. It only works. Well, frankly, <laughs> I don't know when it does work. But it certainly makes you feel like you don't have to worry about it, doesn't it? Because since God isn't in it, God isn't with it, and God doesn't do anything for it. As a matter of fact, it probably won't do anything for you either. Would you settle for an absentee God? Hear now this, O oh foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence? Jeremiah 5, 21, 22. There are over many who have much knowledge and very little virtue, said the blind saint Malaval, and who often speak of God while rarely speaking to God. The Bible teaches plainly enough the doctrine of the divine omnipresence. But for the masses of professing Christians, this is an era of the absentee God. They don't think he sees. They don't think he hears. They don't think he knows. And they act like he doesn't abide everywhere, always, at the same time. Most Christians speak of God in the manner usually reserved for a departed loved one. Oh, remember when? Rarely is one who is present with them right where they are, even in them. But they do often speak to him. Or do they? In fact, they do not. Truth is always better than error, and with the inspired scripture before us, we need not think wrongly about such an important matter as this. We can know the truth if we choose to know the facts and the truth. An absentee God is, among other things, inadequate. It's not true. God is everywhere. He does not meet the needs of the being called man, as a baby that is not satisfied away from its mother, and as life on earth is impossible without the sun, so human beings need a present God that can be neither healthy nor satisfied without him. In other words, if God isn't with you always, then he is not with you in all ways, and in every way that you choose to be without him, it will not be healthy for you. Surely God could not have created us to be satisfied with anything less than his presence. For if he intended that we should get on without him, then we would have been satisfied to not seek out and find him and then find satisfaction in him, with him, and through him. No, the scriptures in moral reason agree that God is present everywhere, that God is present in your sin, is he is present in your righteousness. He sees all, he knows all, he hears all, and he is here, even now. So when a person tries to hide, or deny, or change, or rearrange the scriptures to fit their own idea about God, they're usually trying to deny the fact that God is obviously right here right now, watching, seeing, and tolerating at this moment the foolishness that people who are blind try to tell others why they're blind.